Hey guys, Joe here again from the Review Crew, joined as always by Mike. Mikey. I liked your energy. <laughs> uh, we're continuing season two. We're on episode seven. The end of episode six was uh, pretty. Yeah, I, I. that's an understatement, sure. <laughs> the first cliffhanger to start the first book with. Uh, second, book. second book. I'm sorry. Wow. Beginning of the second book with. Thanks. Um, Honestly, there's a lot that could be theorized about. A lot of tidbits. Which, I think which we, did, we did. We did which plenty we of did. crafting. But this is a lot moving forward now, especially as we see something resembling a protomolecule, like humanoid with energy. Nothing indicated and he's a protomolecule the, guy. And impending yeah, color. fallout of Ganymede, you yeah. know, falling to shambles. So this, this could be the uh, ripple, you know, butterfly effect causing a giant ripple in the everything. A giant crisis going on because the spark, see, yeah. I mean, the, it's, there's no way that it's gonna get out of this unscathed. As you can see, the space was at the space station, I guess it was falling, as well as the, the entire Martian Marines were just killed. And Martian Marines are no joke, they're, plus, they're, they're known to be no joke. Yes, well, there's a very important thing that happened this time around. Whereas every time up until now, either Mars was attacked or the UN was attacked. Were. They both were attacked. Yes. Uh, I forgot about this last episode, but I'm just now realizing they introduced Epstein Corporation and they, talking about the Epstein drive last episode. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's going to have relevance moving forward. Potentially. As a new player. I don't know. Why else would they do that? Especially as they mentioned that humans can live for like 100 and something years plus. You know, now that was 137 years ago, so there's a good chance that his children are alive in some extent we about uh, to find out or he's i don't even know if he had children but still his wife or in her he literally uh, didn't have children I, okay. if anything his wife had children yeah that's possible but he didn't uh Let's well she did say she was pregnant yeah so. she was pregnant. I she, pregnant she was pregnant yeah wife. i thought he literally said leaving her without kids no, no no at least he'll be leaving her and their future kids a ton of money because she has the blueprints to the drive their kids or her kids their kids they i don't kids. remember that i thought that was literally the whole point is he got a second yacht instead well, we'll of probably find out more flesh we're about to find out yeah and we'll find out about uh james holden's a parents theory mom is that dad, this mom episode dad, maybe, maybe, spoilers? Dad, maybe. Dad, spoilers all right and here we go oh no i did it off cue no, we never <laughs> Days we're gonna have to do a 3D setup so when Mike reaches for his drinks, he comes out the camera. He's like, Whoa, it's my Gatorade. <laughs> oh, bloody snow. Oh, because the blood freezes back in the space. Huh? Yeah. Not doing too good. A little bloody. Narrowly avoiding the uh, kill shot there. Am I rolling over? Well, I mean, there's literally a giant pane oh. of metal or glass. See, like it's a blood snowflake. Yeah. Pretty disgusting that it freezes. That's a macrab carb. Did you say that word? Macabre. Macabre. The people know what we're trying to say. Macabre. Macabre. Rescue crew. Rescue crew. Calm down, Gunny. Life support critical. We've got a photo shoot. We're going to get you out of here. Hold still. Hold still. Impact. <laughs> oh, blew the suit off. Yo, that's the craziest intro to Starfield I've ever seen. Orbital mirrors, which <laughs> Can't wait. Agdoms. We estimate over 3,000 dead and thousands Jesus. more wounded. Jesus. But make no mistake, this was an escalation. We need to choose an appropriate Martian target in response. Christian? We invite Mars to a peace summit. A peace summit? Nobody knows what's going on. They're being misdirected. Yes. No one can explain it. Mars thinks it's our weapon. We think it's theirs. Because the man sitting in that chair decided to talk instead of shoot. Ganymede is the worst it's ever been between our nations. It's time to step back before we're all wandering through the rubble, defending ourselves with rocks and sticks. Why didn't you ever run for office? I like getting shit done. 
and I like to keep my head attached. <laughs> Your father was smart. You're smarter. Ooh, that's a good Ooh. compliment. Like well, I mean, when you're acting like a total war hawk and you're like, war! It's like, who does he get to listen to? We have refugee ships waiting Earthers and Martians on Echo now. This is Tara. Hey, look! Oh! It's our boy! You asked where he was! Oh, wait, does she. It was on her private con, though. So she doesn't actually. Bro! Why? <laughs> She's too spicy. I can't deal with it. There's always a new angle with her. One each. <gasps> He's here! Welcome on City! I just got the realization that they'd never interacted before. No, it was Miller that interacted with him. That we've seen. One each. Back off. Flashback to Amos time. I obviously it's trauma for him. Might be. Gunny, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but no one from your team made it. Oof. What happened? You're the op. I was hoping you could tell us. Six blues charging you? No. No, oh, wait, it was a seventh. Episode name is Seven. He, he would have picked up on it. He was, he was Lieutenant on Lieutenant Sutton was killed with 11 others on the shore. Six Marines, one creature chasing them. We took out 11 military men. Again. He's got PTSD. Most of the crew, most of our crew has PTSD. He's That's going cool. ham. It changed your brain with that procedure. On the That's molecule, the probably. Like the, you know the. It was temporary at first. Dress didn't ever coerce any of us. When did you decide to make it permanent? That first day, within five minutes. Today there was this boy that looked at me like I was a monster. It made me remember when I was that boy. Mm. So somebody hurt your mother. I lost her a long time ago. And then there was Lydia. Who? Just someone that looked after me. We are about to rewrite the entire story of humanity. And if you like, you can be a part of that too. I can help you. Thank you all for mm. your presence today. Mm. I have a historic opportunity. Have 30 for nukes. First arrows. A unified belt must send a representative that speaks for all of us. Anderson uh, should represent us. Ooh. <laughs> Excuse me. No disrespect. I just imagine the look on the inner faces when they see who is sitting across the table from them. <laughs> <laughs> I would be honored to represent the belt. It just puts a target on Dawes instead of Johnson. Artists cannot look upon a thing but wonder who it belongs to, huh? To make it their possession. Possession is nine tenths of the law, but that is not the way of the bell. We say the more you share, the more your bowl will be plentiful. And those that will not share. And if we are all well water, homie ain't going to die, huh? Yeah. Earthers, Martians, they see us as their possessions. Yeah. Animals yeah. to test their new weapons. Ooh. And make no mistake, he just riled them all again. up. We must protect ourselves against yeah. these weapons. Yeah. That's my hope. That someday we will know the whole truth of Eros. But right now, we believe that we have destroyed the threat. When we took over Protestant Station, we killed the madman who made that weapon. And Johnson says that we are safe. But I say, once a thing is written, in the A for Sempre, it is forever! I was on Eros. 
James Holden, uh, Vratnar. One by one, the best Earth has to offer us. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he is an uh, idealist, my friend. But I agree with you about the missile. Oh, for Lotus, no, no, we divide them amongst the factions. They each decide for them. That's a terrible idea. Keeping, keeping the missiles is an act of war, which will lead to the end of the battle. Using them gets us the same result. That is why they are both right. Damn, Dawes is so good at this. Yeah, man, he really is. He pulls all the belter strings and but the earth he knows people are just like he knows people bro do you know what everyone saw in there do you know what anderson Dawes saw in there you and fred johnson two big noise earthers telling belters how they should run the belt all on this goddamn thing together and everyone keeps telling me to pick a side i trained in one g since i could walk but it's different when you're there this oppressive pull down it pulls their spirits down with it oh here's the space adderall down. And she's probably wondering, like, why is he taking that right now? Just focus on the facts. You see those hands? <laughs> so <laughs> That's true. In a line coming hard at you. Fucking Earth has attacked us. They want a war. We'll give them a goddamn war. Yeah, if you thought she was angry before. Dumb. She she's had a head trauma. Almost though. died. Severe trauma. Yeah. So, Her friends are all dead. She's oblivious. Got head trauma during that. One of these. I don't think the Martians will give you one. They didn't give you one either. Mm -hmm. salvage. <laughs> the most sound uh, is. <laughs> what do you want? To know the part of the story that you and Fred Johnson left out. Good and bad. Don't get distracted by that. It will just confuse you. <laughs> <laughs> Good men do bad things, like Fred Johnson. And bad men do things believing it's for the good of all mankind. Fred Johnson is tactical. He can't think any other way. He wouldn't offer me up to the inner planets as his errand boy or be willing to return Earth's missiles so readily unless he had another card to play. Hmm. None that we know of. Now get off my ship. Mm. <laughs> Just missing the hat, that's all. Any weapon that Fred Johnson has is vulnerable. You know what he's getting at with that, right? He's gonna be mine soon. We are in this together. Otherwise, we're all lost. She needs to pick a damn side. She's like, damn, the fucking torpedo in the pod really got to you know. Should've done it. Oh, well, well, puts her in a unique position. No, 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 you just had head trauma. She's angry, bro. She's gotta get ready to fight some Earthers. Shit! What did you see, Bobby? You not want people to think she's crazy? Probably. Okay. It's okay. We need you back home. It's hard to find good people. Do they have the same accent? If we're going to reminisce, let's at least get a drink, huh? We will toast to Fred Johnson's secret weapon. Well, they're both from series, he said. Yeah. Probably dated, obviously, how it's acting. Arch memory drop. Space Adderall! It's actually. Is it Adderall? Yeah, I get it. It's sharpened your mind. <laughs> Gunny, focus. A seventh man was bringing up the rear? The seventh man, he was chasing them. The UN Marines, they weren't firing at us. They, they were shooting behind them, at him. Then what happened? The seventh man, he wasn't wearing a vac suit. That's enough. He's getting new data. He says it's You got a nice room now. That's what I said earlier. <laughs> Do you see that 122 inch monitor? I thought that, that is that a fish tank behind him or something? You see that? Diogo Harari. Is he gonna check him oh, out? Oh boy. I better keep my eye on you. Soon your legend will be better than mine. Must have been so good at people. 
Importance Maybe is that just guy. foreshadowing that? Oh, oh no, he's gassing him up to make a friend. It's I think so it's good. I think it's foreshadowing that Diogo. He's trying to get information out. I think he's gonna be a big person, though, Diogo. Well, Who's gonna get murdered in a back alley? Not anymore. Taking on the mantle of Miller. Do you know how old you are? Nineteen, I think. Can I tell you this? Even a sense of time comes from them. Time it takes the earth to spin on its axis, the earth to go once around the sun. On Jupiter, you'll be celebrating your first birthday. Earth and Mars are meeting for an emergency summit. Your first hand account of what happened will lay the groundwork for what Oh you no. You'll tell them your story. Uh. Tensions were high. Uh, in the confusion of a communications blackout, your team fired first. Sir? Did you say we shot first? She's gonna give the full story when she gets there about how she saw a creature and all that stuff. Let's go! Honey! I like her now. It's the story they're going with. It was also because, as far as we know, Martians don't know about the protomolecule, but the Earth, or the Earth government does about it. So things will click once they start talking. Sergeant, you're going to Earth. Oh no. I don't know how she wanted to go to Earth. She wanted to storm them. Now she's on a peace mission. And yeah! They're, and they're gonna tell the story Earth wants to hear. Or is she? Or is she? He never really, you know, was one. Follow time. orders? Yeah. He's gonna check those logs. Uh, where's my torpedo at? You she's like, the, uh oh. You think the advanced engineer wouldn't erase that from the logs? That there's a torpedo in a pod? I feel like. That's pretty hard to hide. Why is he taking a gun? He's not checking the torpedoes. Mm, you know what he is, though. Is he gonna go kill this guy? Or is he just gonna put him at gunpoint? I think that might have been the plan, but it looks like somebody beat him to it. Dawes obviously kidnapped him. Oh, Diogo! Diogo, no! He's in it with the bats. How can I help you, Holden? Where's Cortazar? Under guard in his cell. I'm in his cell right now. He's gone. So are his guards and his data cores. Is this the coup on Johnson coming right now? <laughs> My second in command? And he's gone. If Diogo wasn't on that ship, I'd say shoot it. That captain? I don't know where he is. Get your ass down here. We'll lose him if you wait. Just Bravo. go. Go. Is this bait? Is Dawes baiting them? Yeah, we didn't see them enter the ship specifically. Prepare the BDCs. We cannot shoot him down. Not down. Out. Steady. Steady. It's bait. So bait. I don't know if I trust Naomi right now. If it comes down to it, I go low, you go high. Open our door on my mark. Ready? Don't shoot, boss man. Here go. Here go. We lost doors. He's got quarters off. They're gone. Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Good call. Uh, that's stressful. That's stressful. That's stressful. Okay, so, <sighs> moving into this discussion. Um, the thing I asked you to remind me, I, I remember. So, we saw that Amos had a little bit of stress slash PTSD when he saw how the child reacted with the mom cowering in fear. Yes. And we know Amos grew up, we found out this episode, he lost his mom. We know he grew up in a brothel slash with sex workers so i only assume while growing up he probably bared witness to you know an abuse of a sex worker to a certain point maybe as a child or you know a young adult and responded in a way and became the protectors of them which is how he became so knowledgeable about how to find pedophiles as well and just to fight yeah, and then maybe he became like their protector or their pimp or something Face pimp. <laughs> okay um 
crazy episode again. No questions answered. More questions received. I think it was hold on. So going off your thing, I think it was more the fact that he just felt like he was that kid defending the women in his life that were getting pushed around by abusive men. Yeah, that's why he got so attacked by it. Is because he was the at that exact moment what he fought against as a child he and was, was now part. Yeah, like I think that's that's what that was. If we're gonna go into I guess. the trauma, but I also I view it as like you know he you know, something happened with the woman or the women that were raising him because you know he grew up around brothels, so you know if one of the sex workers brings him around, uh, you know during the off time they probably all of them took maybe turns to taking care of him. Who knows? Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find. Maybe out. I'm just assuming, but it's one of those things where you know it kind of you know we never saw Na- uh, Amos flustered like that. You know Amos is usually cool, calm, collected, knows the situation. And then it, he get, he kind of triggered himself in a way where yeah, he, it definitely trauma. was definitely a trigger. So yeah. obviously, I love that you guys last episode were like, "Where's Anderson Dots? What's he up to?" Yeah, and then he, he says, that. And, and, like, "I'm here to do things, guys." <laughs> you ask where Miller is, <laughs> and I knew he was coming back, and I was like, "Well, soon enough." <laughs> I, I I didn't remember if it was this episode or one soon. Yeah. Uh, but we got to see him outmaneuver everyone the entire episode. He Literally is... during the meeting, he outmaneuvers all of them completely. By the end of the episode, he outmaneuvers them completely again by tricking the Rasananza to chase the wrong ship, by finding out um, Fred Johnson's backup weapon and stealing Cortazar. You know, and he really is the perfect person, <laughs> if they still sent him, to go to those peace talks because... I think he's just as conniving, manipulative, and eloquent as Avasarala. I would I agree. agree. Now, I said, um, I think I said before, uh, Johnson was also, you know, suggesting him too, because it doesn't put a target on Fred Johnson. Because if you come out and say, I am the de facto leader of the OPA factions all combined, I am the person who speaks for all the OPA, obviously Earth and Mars are going to be like, huh. Well, let's go teach you a lesson. Just also, like that station a lesson. Also, Johnson's not viewed favorably by Earth, whereas uh, Dawes. Dawes is more of a dark horse candidate. Like they probably know of him, but they do, right? I but, think they they fear him for different reasons. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the Belter he, who can unite the Belters. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got that. He's got that riz. He's he's got he has words down. He does. Now, we saw him do it to Diogo, where he kind of manipulated Diogo, made him feel good. And then he's like, you know, probably off screen said, hey, go fly this ship. Make it seem like you're, you know. Literally. And you, you called it off. You're like, that's bait. That's bait. He probably slipped away on some it's ship. bait. Or, or in the shadows. <laughs> but in a station full of belters and Fred Johnson being somebody from Earth, I am inclined to believe that, especially because the second command knows him so well, Anderson Dawes probably has all these people under his hand if he wanted to versus Johnson, but it showed during that meeting as well. It did. Well, also Anderson Dawes knows yeah. Fred Johnson's right hand. Yeah, and you know? like it was romantic with his right hand at some point, obviously. <laughs> well, that's the real value in... No one else... You would find that funny. I, He's well, romantic with his right hand. Come on. That's the only person we've seen to be romantic to. Listen, Julie, not even. No, Dawes, Dawes has a great approach. Right oh. hand. Dawes has, keep up, Mikey. Yeah. Dawes has the great approach of <laughs> he doesn't. So whereas like um, Johnson like kind of has a bit of a, like an iron grip over everybody and like kind of keeps everybody in line. Dawes plays a much better game of making friends and then letting them go off and do their own thing. And then when he needs you, he's like, hey, uh, let's go get a drink. And then he's even better at like. I want this. He's like, no, you want freedom. (laughs) And they're like, you're right. I do want freedom. And he's like, yeah, you do. You do want freedom. But I'll give you freedom. Look at you (laughs) figuring it out all on your own. (laughs) He's a really, really great actor. Uh, And and his lines are, he's just so good. He delivers it flawlessly. Thinking about, it's very, for me, I just thought, interesting that Marus wants to pin the attacks on themselves and say they started the attacks. Well, and maybe it's just that's their they see it as the best way to avoid a war is saying, hey, we are the ones that did it because they've already put themselves about 100 years behind because of war. They don't want to keep doing it. That's what I was just going to say. So I'm glad you get it. Yes, I get it. it, it the, the dream is still to terraform the planet and have their own home. But that is their entire mission to discuss it. The seventh man is obviously some sort of 
life form that's been modified. Or it's a mutant. It. It's some type of energy creature that probably absorbs and can expel energy. You know, like you said, like, it looks like a halo. I don't know why you keep thinking it's proto molecule. It could just I be some crazy mutant. It's the proto molecule because it's, it's a girl. goddamn sex squatch. <laughs> but it's worth following it, and it's obviously a proto corp. Yo, it that literally killed like a eleven people or ten, 10. people. Plus, a, ten plus man heavily armed. Oh, like, did you nine. see the scenes? It looks like the man pulled an energy sword out of Halo and went shh, across yeah. their armor. It, it was it, it crazy. Some vibes of like ODSTs, <laughs> but but it's a fair. The only thing we have to really be asking yeah. is, how did the seventh man get there? It's probably dropship. Like you just said, with the drone, yeah. at least obviously you on a it's Halo ring. You could either believe it was set up with somebody <laughs> who's infected, or it was if it was somebody who's infected, it would end up like how the station was eventually. It could be just a protocorp drop, you know, and see. What yeah, happens. I mean, it could have just been a drop ship from all the ships that they, they, were attacking the Mars uh, they, ship. Those they heavily Sirocco. They heavily implied you know, these are only two samples Scarosa. that we know are on Venus and here. They, yeah, they're so. like, oh, only two samples are Venus and here. Well, Mister uh, Mao has been you know, radio silent for a while, so. He's probably pulling some back streams. He says, like, Maybe that not is Mr. Meow. Not to mention, <laughs> Cortazar even mentioned he didn't think those were the only samples. Yeah. Now, Cortazar has been kidnapped, and what does this mean? It means that somehow, probably because of the second in command, Anderson Dahl is probably being fed information by the second in command of Johnson. So he knew it seemed about like it was more of a dark contact that he just like tapped no, when he got he, there. They, Diogo told him. Yeah. Diogo told him what? D he, Anderson Dawes, the whole reason he went and visited Diogo, he's like, oh, you were with Miller. And as he's gassing him up, he's like, you went to the science place, right? And he's like, what What did you take? Like, what did Fred Johnson have you take? And he told him know, the scientist. About something else. Yeah. And then obviously through the scientist and maybe through the connect of the second in command, he learns about the protomolecule. Because obviously, you know, that guy is like, I need to use a protomolecule. And he's probably like, well, we can use it for revenge. Because... You know, that's about what he's, you know, thinking. But he also, interestingly enough, he said, you know, we have to get back the nukes. Johnson was like, I don't want to do that. My nukes. But, but why do you think Anderson Dawes said that? Because if he doesn't have nukes, then he can't, you know, he loses power if he has no nukes. But also, if he has nukes, then it could be just preemptive strikes from the uh, inner... Okay. What do you think? I think they gave the nukes back. One, because... It, well, uh, I don't think they've given them back yet. They're planning on giving them back. They're planning on giving the nukes back, because holding the nukes doesn't really give them an advantage, because they have, what, 15 nukes? 30. 30 nukes? I mean... They're planet-busting nukes, they said. Yeah, but Earth and Mars have defenses against 30 missiles. They, so said, that, they said that they were... It was, I think they specifically the, said that they were designed to avoid these... For, sure, sure, sure. But realistically, it's not as good of a bargaining chip as giving it back to Earth to show that they could have kept them, decided to give it away. They plan on entering these these talks with a leg up by doing so. And again, it also does uh, delegitimize Johnson because now he can't go rogue with 30 nukes. He is now yes. without that bargaining chip. And Dawes is the one that brings it to the table instead of Johnson. And that's why Dawes is doing what? Doing the scientist to other bargaining chip. He's trying to find a better weapon. Yes. Yeah. And the better weapon, obviously, is potentially a proto molecule. But there's only one way for us to find out. Hey, that's to watch the next episode. Woo! Um, we're gonna keep on watching. Now, make sure you guys keep on watching our reactions too. We have been having a blast, and honestly, we're starting to get to the point where things are probably gonna get a little wacky. I'm starting to get anxiety because so I just want answers. I just want answers. I want answers. I want answers. And Joe's just sitting in the middle, like, oh, I didn't realize that the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, without further ado, we have the review crew. I'm Mikey. I'm Joe. And I'm Mike. You guys take care, and thank you for watching. Bye. Toodaloo.